Amos chapter 3. What does Amos say? Amos chapter 3. Can two walk together lest they be agreed? Can two walk together unless they agree? This is this is kind of like the foundational uh, foundational thought that I want to look at this year. Okay, I want Amos two or Amos three three to be our foundational verse for this year. Okay. The pivoting focal point. Okay, how can two walk together unless they agree? Okay, now I see two twos here. Okay, which is pretty neat. Uh, last year there was a two and a one, right? Well, and this is what I was seeing Friday night. I was seeing that we were. Uh, at times walking with God, but we were by <coughs> ourselves and not walking together. Okay? Amen. And that's a struggle with most of us. You know, we find ourselves alone or find ourselves not paired up or uh, in strength together. Okay? And, and God wants to change that viewpoint this year. Okay? And I'm not necessarily saying uh, a male or female or husband and wife type thing. I'm just saying, a lot of times, I've even found myself by myself. And, and you know, in, in ministry, I'm by myself, you know. I'm walking alone at times, and I'm, uh, and I'm not as strong as what I could be, right? Because mm -hmm. Jesus has never uh, sent people out one by one. He's always sent us out two by two, mm -hmm. Right? So that we would always have someone there to be strong when I'm weak and vice versa. Amen? So, he's going to change our, 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 our relational, our relationships this year. He's going to give us a helpmate. He's going to give us someone that will help us strive and get through this year. Amen? Amen. I, I'm seeing this because, number one, we have to agree with God. Amen? That's their first focal point. We have to agree with God in what God says. And, and what, does, what is the agreement that we have to agree with with God? We have to agree His Word. Right? You guys understand that many, many uh, denominations are, are, are brought about because we don't agree on His Word? One church says one thing about the, the word, and someone says, "Well, that ain't true for today." You know, uh, it, it's it's imperative that we learn to agree with God and His Word. Period. Amen. Amen. From cover to cover. Period. And I'm not saying that we all have to be theologians, but but we have to walk by faith. For it says in the scripture, without faith, we can't please God. It's impossible to please God without faith, right? So we have to agree that we can uh, understand and recognize what God is saying to us and do it, right? Not just be hearers, but be doers of the word, right? And, and that's agreeing with God, right? If we just hear the word and not do it. Are we in agreement with God? No. No. Right? If we if we do the word, okay, if we act upon what we're listening to, isn't that more agreeable with God? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay? So just don't be hearers this year. Be doers of the word. Okay? Act upon these things. Write things down. Okay? Get out your Bibles, <coughs> which is good, but get out some journals too and write these things down. Make them plain. Make them to where they can help you, okay, be be, uh, become better, okay? I'm not up here for myself, by myself alone. I'm up here for you guys, right? And the word that I'm giving you is for you also. It's not just for me. Amen? Amen. 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 
I heard it in the back there. Amen. 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 There you go. Okay? So, we have to agree with God's word, right? Mm -hmm. What else do we have to agree God on? Any thoughts? On what we believe. What we believe, right? <laughs> okay? It, it, uh, a lot of people have a hard time believing God. <clears throat> what about healing, health, uh, finances, right? Uh, or money, right? Come on now. We have to believe God. What, what does God say about His Word, though? What does God say in His Word about our healing? What does God say about His Word, about our finances? What does He say? And, and if you see it, it, do you believe it? That it's for you? You know, a lot of times we just read over it and it just goes, wow, you know? And it really does, because we really don't think that it's for us, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I've heard it a lot, a lot, you know? Well, you know, uh, it may be, you know, the blind man may have been healed, but uh, God can't heal me. You know, why not? Does he not say that he's the same God today as he was last year, as he was back then? Wow. You know, he's still the same God, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people come... And, and don't receive because they don't believe. Amen? So this year, we have to agree with God in His Word, and we have to believe in what He says. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, if we can get this one straight, what about our second one? You know, I don't think if we can get this one straight, that we'll have a, we'll actually have a hard time getting the other one straight. Because it's kind of imperative that we get things right with God. You know, I, I've been looked at this, guys. Go to Exodus real quick, chapter 20. Check this out. Now, when I'm in Exodus 20, what might I be referring to? God's Word? The law? The law. Oh, okay. The Ten Commandments. Right? This was the first established word that was given man. Okay? This came out of God's mouth, came out of God's finger, right? He even orchestrated and made some a covenant with them, right? By making two tablets of stone and then writing these with his finger, the Ten Commandments, right? And these things are to be, uh, this was his word and it was to be believed, right? And what was his word? What were the Ten Commandments? Um, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Right? You shall have no other gods before me. Right? That's an agreement. Mm -hmm. Can we agree with God that we will no longer have any other God but him? You know? And, and the word God in here is Elohim. Okay? Okay? It's often referred to for angels and other gods, little Jews. Okay, it's not just to God himself, but it's also considered to be an angel. Uh, they've called angels Elohims. They've called us as Elohims. If you look in Psalms 82, okay? And then uh, they also refer to other gods as being Elohim, okay? Uh, or mighty judges. Okay, that's what the word states, is a mighty judge. And so God does not want to have any other God but Him, before Him, right? And it's not like we're placing something in front of Him. In a sense, we are. But if you guys are looking back in the day, this was, this was kind of neat how i seen it. Back in the day, they were polytheistic in their nature or in their ideologies. And they had more than one god. You know, the Egyptians had a ton of gods. The Greeks had a ton of gods. There was Zeus and then there was Achilles and all these other gods, right? And they would be side by side, right? As Zeus being the main god. And then they would be side by side. 
God is saying right here, I don't want any other God beside me. See, because sometimes we'll put something that is worshipped, and the word worship means to bring forth value, right, mm -hmm. in, in place of God. Have someone there or something there that is in place of God, that is right next to God, and we worship that thing or that idol or that person just as we do God. See, and that's the whole idea behind that first commandment, is God wants to be worshipped alone. No other person, Amen. no other thing, Amen. just him alone. Amen? Can we agree with that? Amen. Amen? Amen? See, this is imperative that we learn and understand what the scriptures say. Because if we can agree with God that we will no longer have any other idols or any other thing but him, him alone, right? right? If we place him first <laughs> on the throne, then everything else comes next, Amen. right? It's actually made easier. Okay? Number two, you shall not have, make for yourself any carved or graven images. Okay? Now, a graven image or a carved image would be something that is sculpted out. Okay? And we often see these things in other uh, forms of religion. Okay? Uh, <coughs> even the Catholic Church has got some statues and stuff like this, guys. You know, and they're images. And we bow down to these things. And we pray to these things. It's kind of sad, you know, that we, we should have, and it's like we forgot what the second commandment was. And we bow down to these things, asking them to help us get to God. When Jesus has already told us that we don't need no other person. He is our mediator. He is our help, right? He's already established a work between us to where we can go to God by ourselves. Amen. We don't need any other help. Amen. I'm serious now. And uh, we have to be careful about having idols and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but again, why would he put it in here and have us agree to it um, unless it was important to him? Right. It's important to God. Okay. And because of that, Check this out. Because we make these graven images, because we worship and bow down to these images, he says, For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations. There's a curse that happens because of idol worship. Okay? And many of us become sick. Many of us Die early because of that kind of stuff. Okay? Number seven. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Right? Now again, it's the third commandment, right? But if we're putting God first and having no other God before Him, let's value His name. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, this is not just, a, uh, not just a way of saying something, you know, like saying Jesus Christ in a... Uh, in an informal uh, uh, um, I don't have the word for it you know we may be slanderous if we say that name you know and, and make it out to be slander or slur right um, it's not necessarily saying that as much as you're saying the name of God in, 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 in a way that would seem to be like you value him, but you're really not putting any kind of value in that name at all. You're using it more so as an excuse. You know, you're using his name for profit. You're using his name for, for, your, for your own benefit. You know, that would be, in a sense, using the name of God in vain. Because you're not using it to glorify him. You're using it to glorify yourself. And how many preachers do you see using his name in vain because it's, it, it's for their glory. It's for their ministry. You know, they're using his name in vain. You guys understand? Amen. And then number eight, remember to keep the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay? Now, as Christians, we don't necessarily observe the Sabbath, which is a Saturday. Okay? 
but we used to 40 years ago or so, you know, maybe even 30 years ago, we, you know, all, we were off on Saturday and Sunday, just for that main purpose, you know, of honoring God, you know. But what has happened over the last 30 years? We no longer have Saturdays off, and we no longer have Sundays off. And we wonder why we were so messed up in our culture, you know, in our cities and everything else, guys. We're not like we used to be. We've got more sickness now than we ever have had. We've got more deaths now, more murder now, more crime than anything else. We've got, we've got drugs and alcohol out the yin-yang, right? And it's terrible. But when are we going to get back to honoring God? You keep it hit at least one day holy. <clears throat> Not using it for our own selfish ambition, but to honor Him in that one day. You know? That's why I... Uh, I want us to be honorable this year. To give God at least one day, you know, to honor Him. Amen? And to worship Him. Amen? Amen. Now... Amen. Remember, he gives us six days to labor, right? So work, work those six days. But, you know, just know that you need to put God first. And again, we'll put the job right next to God. We will. We'll, we'll put our paychecks right next to God. Thinking that this is our form of, you know, that the, the job or the paycheck is our form of, uh, of income, you know? And, and guys, it's not. Who gave you the job? Who's blessed you with strength? Who's given you the ability to get up every morning, you know? But if you're not honoring God, how can you honor your employer? You know, I'm just asking. You know, you want to be an honorable employee, right? You want to do good, right? You, you want to show forth favor, right? You want to be at your best, right? Well, honor God in everything that you do, right? And I'm not necessarily saying that Sundays are going to be a day. Because nowadays, it's almost impossible not to get a job and have to work on Sunday, you know? Even as I was, was as a truck driver, you know, I had to work on Sunday. <laughs> I might work two or three weeks out of the year and then I'm off for two days and I'm already in my church for that one day and then I'm gone again, you know, for another two or three weeks. It hurt me, you know, and I understand the, the ramifications of making the decision and, and then, you know, down the road a ways, you know, two or three thousand miles down the road, I'm starting to recognize, well, maybe I made a bad choice because I was thinking that I might be getting home a whole lot better, you know, or might be able to be in church once in a while. Here I haven't been in church in over a month. You know? And I feel it, guys. I feel it when I, I'm not able to, to get in, with, uh, in the presence of God and with my friends. I feel it. You know? It hurts me. And about two years in or so, uh, as I was you know, praying to the Lord, it might be on a certain, certain Sunday or Saturday night like tonight, you know, last night. Uh, I'd be heading down the road, and I remember this one time that I was actually uh, in uh, in Missouri, and I was heading on down into uh, Oklahoma, and right there in Joplin, uh, I noticed that, uh, you know, in my doings and my workings and stuff, you know, I'd always kind of make a plan, you know, of how far I was going to run and everything, you know, and on that Saturday, I kind of recognized that I was going to be uh, getting my 600 miles in about about Joplin, Missouri, and it's like, you know what, God, tomorrow's Sunday, and I really would like to be in church, you know, I'm tired, wore out, you know, 70 hours a week, you know, 14, 15 hours a day is just stressing me out, you know, same thing, day in and day out, all you're doing is driving and sleeping, driving and sleeping, driving and sleeping, you know, sure, you get to listen to music and stuff like this, but there's no fellowship, you know, and I was dry and parched, and uh, I really wanted to get in and find a place, and as I was going in the Joplin, 
was looking at that there's only two truck stops. There's a little rinky dink truck stop, and then there's the Flying J. Flying J's are, are owned by the Mormons, so there's not going to be any chaplains or chaplaincy type places over there. Uh, they're usually kind of dried out, you know. And so uh, I went into Flying J and parked my truck and went on in there and asked the lady, I said, is there a church nearby? You know, maybe I could drive to or maybe I could walk, you know. She says, it's about three or four uh, blocks down the road. Uh, a little Baptist church is right there on the right. And I'm going, okay, you know. So I put on my, my best duds, you know. Now it's kind of scruffy and everything, you know, being out for, for a while. And, uh, I'm, I'm kind of cautious, you know, with certain churches that I go into. Um, but, you know, I said, hey, I need to be in church, you know. So I got up early, got down there, uh, about 8.30 or so, and I opened up the door and everyone's wearing suits. And I was like, oh gosh, now here I am looking like a sore thumb, you know. But as soon as I, I came in, man, it's like, hey, how's it going, brother? Uh, welcome, man, what's your name? And uh, You're just in time for Sunday school, you know. It's like, okay. And so I went on in, and here, I, all week, I've been stressing and, and you know, going through this hard ordeal, you know, suffering. And guess what their Sunday school lesson was on? Suffering. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, it was just breaking my heart, man. But then a few minutes I was crying and everyone, what, what's going on, Brother Mike? And, man, this thing is speaking to my heart. I actually, one of the first times that I ever had a chance to speak to a crowd of people was on that morning. I just let my heart loose, man, and started crying and weeping, talking about how the Lord is getting me through this time of suffering, you know, through this valley of dry bones and everything else, you know. It was like, wow, you know. It was so good that they had me come in as a guest speaker in the regular service. It was like, this is crazy. I'm in a Baptist church, you know. But I felt so good at the end of, this, at the, end of the service, you know. I felt like I was refreshed. And, and uh, you know, good to go for another thousand miles. You guys understand. Mm -hmm. That's the way I. Uh, that's the way I kind of feel. You know, when it comes down to uh, the love tank. You know, I've often talked about a love tank. You know, every one of us have got a love tank, and uh, we're either em on empty, or we're going to be running full. You know, and when it came down to the this morning, you know, where was your love tank? You know, where was it at on, on where you guys in need of, of some love, you know? Why, this is the reason why you came, was for love and fellowship, you know, so that you get your love tank filled up, you know, so you could be good for the week. Amen? I, that's why I come, you know? Usually I, I'm about halfway, you know, I'm never really ever, uh, never empty anymore, you know, especially coming in on Wednesday nights and having a chance to be over there brown packing Thursday and Friday, you know, I'm, you know, I'm usually filled up by the time Sunday comes around. So, you know, but I, I'm just asking questions here because, um, you know, the importance of, of putting God first, you know, the importance of keeping yourself filled up and, 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 and alive, you have to agree with God that you're going to, do what he asked you to do, to do this year, you know? Give him one day. Give him at least one day a week, you know? Honor God. And if you can do these four things, the Bible says, you know? These first four commandments were about God, right? Okay? The fifth commandment is, is what? Honor your father and mother. Okay? <clears throat> Honor your father and mother. Now, why would God say that? I think because it, it's a value thing to God. You know, He values family, doesn't He? He values family above anything else. Before or after Him, right, is family. Right? After you honor God, you honor your family. Right? Because He's the one that brought you into the family. Right? You did choose who your mom and dad were. Okay? Now, after that, the next um, five verses after that, okay, 
are relational for friends, right? You got friends, you got neighbors. And you got enemies. Okay? Now, what does he say on the, on the uh, next five? When it comes down to friends, neighbors, and, and uh, enemies. Okay? He says, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that your neighbor has. Okay? Now, all these things kind of line up pretty easily under friends and neighbors, right? But then we get into Matthew chapter 5, and Jesus kind of messes that up, doesn't he? Because, you know, he keeps on saying, well, you've heard it said. You know, you've heard it said that not to commit adultery, but I say, don't even look at a woman with lust, right? You see what I'm saying? And, and we're going to have to be in, in that agreement with him. That these next five are in our perspective for being in that next two setting. Okay? Because if we can agree with God, then we can agree not to hurt anyone else. And really that's all he's asking us to do is not to hurt anyone else. Right? right? It doesn't matter if it's your friend. It doesn't matter if it's your neighbor. It doesn't even matter if it's your enemy. What does Jesus say in Matthew about our enemies? He says, bless your enemies. Do good to those that persecute you, right? What? Love your, love your enemies. What? What does that mean? You know? Well, everyone else. Uh, you know, even the heathen love their love their, uh, you know, love their neighbors and everything else. I want you to be different, right? I want you to bless those who curse you. Amen? Amen. Can we agree with that? Mm -hmm. yes. That's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Yes. Okay. But if we can take those ten things, and Jesus says it kind of breaks it down to two, doesn't it? See? It breaks it down to two commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right? Isn't that good? Two twos. Right? You've got to be able to walk together with God. That's the first two. Then I've got to be able to walk with my brother, walk with you, walk with my wife, walk with my neighbor, walk with my enemies. That's my second two. Am I right? If I can do that, if I can learn how to do that, okay, 22 is going to be good, you know, because when we're looking at Jesus in, uh, in Mark chapter 6, go to Mark chapter 6 real quick. I'm almost done. <coughs> Chapter 6, verse number 7. Mark 6, verse number 7 says this. And he called the twelve to himself. <coughs> and he began to send them out two by two. Isn't that interesting? They have the relationship factor with God right, and they have the relationship with each other right, and because of that, they now have power over unclean spirits. He's commanded them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and uh, to not put on two tunics, right? Now this is interesting because not only is there opportunity and power to go out and to represent God because we're in line with God and we're in line with each other, but we're also seeing that God will provide for our needs. You guys see that? I see it. 
He says, don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't wear two tunics. Don't worry about how much money you're going to carry. I will provide. Right? Check this out. He says in verse number 10, and then he says to them, in whatever place you enter, stay there until you depart from that place. Right? Now, if I was to go to your house, okay, and I've been to most of your houses, okay, if I've been to your house, isn't it because I, I'm a friend is because you asked me to come in, right? You know why we are friends? You know why we're entered into houses is because we are agreeable, right? I don't, I don't, uh, well, even, even Paul says, when it comes down to other people who have different religions, he says, don't invite them into your house. I've learned that the hard way. Because you open up doors and, and opportunities for evil to come in. It's, it has nothing to do with them, but it's uh, principalities and powers of darkness that we have to be careful about. It's not the person. It's what they believe. Right? And we've got to be careful, guys, because we can uh, entertain evil unannounced. Before you know it, we have chaos and all kinds of sickness in our house. It's like, how the heck did it get in here? Well, whoever you invite in, I mean, am I right or wrong? Right? Sometimes we invite friends in and we don't know what they're doing or not doing right. Next thing you know, uh, I mean, I, I'm just saying, got to be careful. Okay? You've got to be careful because your house needs to be clean. Your house needs to be a place of rest. Your house needs to be a place of protection, right? of security. That's your house. Maintain it. Amen? It's your house. Don't let just anyone in. You know, I, I used to entertain Mormons and Jehovah's Witness and, and all kinds of stuff. You know, I'd bring them inside and everything. And man... I, well, I was young in the faith, okay, and I was always a little bit more eager to get the word out, you know, and everything else. It, it never did turn out very good. You know why? Because we were not agreeing on anything. These guys were just as dogmatic as I am. The only reason why they're there is not for, for people like me. They're for people who don't know anything, that are gullible, that will listen to any kind of lie, and think it's the truth. And then they'll lead them astray. I'm serious now. That's why people let these kind of people in. Is because they don't know any better. And here I am. Knowing better. And these guys will not uh, bow down to me. You know, or bow down and agree with God's word. Okay. They won't do it. They're not, they're not there to be uh, proselytized. Okay. Uh, but I have found it interesting because uh, as I do talk to them, and I, it's not like I don't talk to them, but when I do talk to them, it's usually out there on the front porch, you know, out there on the sidewalk and stuff, and it's like, hey man, let me go in and get my Bible, you know? It's like, what? You know? And out there on the street now, it, it's like there's something different, you know? I've allowed them to speak, but then I open up the Word right where they are at, right? Right? Because I'll use their Bible against them. I will. Okay? I have knowledge and understanding. Right? And the one thing they don't have is the one thing I have. And that's a genuine relationship with God. Amen? And the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the Holy Spirit will open up things and, and let some light to shine in. And before you know it, man, their, their bishops and everyone are trying to get these guys away from me. They, and they'll never come back. They will never come back. Because it's like, oh, I almost got you. Come on now. You know, it's like, oh, we got to go. We got to go. What? 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 Come on. Give me a few more minutes. No, 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 no. We got to go. They will never come back. You know why? Because I am not uh, ignorant. Okay? And I don't want you guys to be ignorant. Amen? Amen. I, w I don't want you guys to be ignorant. I want you guys to know what the Word of God says. So that when you do have tests and opportunities such as that, you'll know what to say. Amen? And, and you'll have the Holy Spirit, more than able, give you everything you need for that particular time and, and time frame. Amen? Amen. But he tells us 
He says, in whatever place you enter the house, stay there until you depart from that place. And whatever will not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet. Now this is a strong corrective measure. Um, obviously, a lot of people don't talk about this or preach about this. But if we're not in agreement, guys, we're not in agreement. Am I right? And it's a severe case right here, obviously. But if they are not willing to receive you nor listen to you, and that's the thing. You know, there's, there's animosity. There, there's a staunch, you know, I will not listen type attitude. A, a staunch... Uh, uh, rebellious attitude, right? They're not going to listen. See, now, it's between them and God. Right? You're not, you're not being mad. You're not being mean. You're just shaking the dust off because your feet got dirty. Amen? If you're in relationship and everything's good, your whole body is clean, Jesus says. Right? That's why he wanted to wash someone's feet, or Peter's feet at the time, was because his feet were dirty. You know, we, often, uh, we oftentimes get dirty because of relationships. And it's not the whole body that needs to be clean, but the feet. And it's kind of funny, I, I got my new shoes on. You know, because I don't like my feet to get dirty. Am I right? It's, it, and it's, because it's relational. It really is. I want to be in a relationship with you guys that we can agree on and be able to walk together in, right? To where we don't have to have our feet dirty because of something not being said or something not being agreed to, okay? If you guys can walk with me, you're going to agree with me, right? If I'm going to walk with you, you're going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with you, right? Amen? Amen. And it's a hard thing now because some things that Jesus says in here are not all that, uh, you know, plainly wrapped in, into a nice little fur bunny, you know, type thing to where everything is happy all the time. Jesus even said he had a few hundred disciples at one time and he started preaching on this eating my flesh and drinking my blood type thing. And everyone freaked out. I don't know why they would freak out, you know, because this is Jesus speaking. You know, I don't care what Jesus would say, you know. I mean, this is Jesus now. And many, it says in John 6, 66. Bless you. This is John 6, 66 that many left him from that day forward and never followed him anymore. They didn't agree with what he said. So they left him. And then Jesus came back to his disciples and says, Are you going to leave me also? I didn't have one. You know, one of the things that caused a, no. a, a rift within the church Thank is a disagreement. Thank you. Am I right? The only reason why you guys don't come at times is because of a lack of agreement. Why? Well, I, don't, I don't like this. I don't like that. Right? This has and that happened. But things can be changed. Right? Things can be covered. You know, love covers a multitude of sin. Right? Just because something happens doesn't mean that we have to disagree about it. Amen? We can learn how to forgive and forget and, and move on. Amen? Because I don't know about you, every one of us, including myself, will at some point in time say something or do something and, and you guys are not going to agree with it. Right? Amen. And, and, and I hate to say it, but uh, uh, many of us might depart from here because we, we got offended instead of forgave. Okay? But when it comes down to this structure here, we're going to have to learn how to forgive. We're going to have to learn how to move on and love and cover and not expose. You know, because it's the hardest thing to love my... It's easy to love my friend. Right? And forgive him because he's my friend. But if it's my neighbor who does that exact same thing, chances are I'm not going to forgive him. But Jesus says, even forgive your neighbor. Come on now. 
And, and so I can deal with that. Now, if my enemy does the same thing, uh-uh. Uh-uh, jack flat time, you know? <laughs> now, that was me in the, in, the, in the past, though, just being honest. I, I had a hard time forgiving people, let alone forgiving myself. Right? Hold on, sir. Okay. I'm just saying, guys, we're going to have to learn how to love. No, 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 no. There's nothing there. Does God love you? Yes. Yes. Does God love your neighbors? Yes. yes. Does God love your enemies? Yes. 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 Does God want you to learn how to love your enemies? Yes. Yes. Just as you love yourself. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be a good year. Okay. This is going to be a great year. But it's conditional. It's conditional. It really is. God loves you. John 3.16 God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten, begotten Son, Son that whoever would believe in Him shall perish. Right? And not it's the perish. whosoever. Not, not everyone's going to love God. Not everyone's going to serve God. Not everyone's going to put God first. Man. That's right. You guys understand me? It is conditional. But it's conditioned upon what you are going to do this year. If you guys line up with the Word this year, make this your central focus this year, I guarantee you, God is not going to lie and, and, and tell you something that isn't going to come true. Okay? If you, if you He says, if you seek me with all your heart, what will happen? You shall find me, right? But the condition is all your heart. See, we don't like that part. I saw God, I saw God. But did you do it with all your heart? No. Well, there you go. It was conditional. He says, if. If is the conditional word, right? He says, if you seek me with half your heart, quarter of your heart, some of your heart. If you just seek me, period. Look for me, you know. If you call out my name, right? If you call me on the on, on the cell phone. No, he says that if you seek me with all your heart. Sometimes we have to battle through these things. I mean, really struggle, persevere, go beyond our strength. What we think is real, right? I I have had to do that at times, guys, because I want to see God. I want to experience God. I want God to be real in my life. I don't want this thing that is hindering me to tell me that it's the God when I already know that God is there, right? All I have to do is press in, brother. That's all I have to do is press in. If I could be like that woman who had issue of blood for 12 years, right? She, she fought, she struggled, she went in through the crowd, and she just said, listen, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I could be healed. You see, many of us won't even get out of the bed, let alone out of the house, not even uh, under, uh, understanding that just by getting out of the house, you're going to be uh, uh, against the law because you shouldn't be even out of the house. But you're so desperate to be healed. You're so desperate to be whole and to be set free from this affliction that's been on you for 12 years. You don't care what the law says anymore, you know, because in that particular situation that law is against you not for you right I'm just saying sometimes if you really want uh, 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 to be healed or delivered it comes through desperation amen the desperate get delivered amen amen last thing you know close as I was up here Friday I asked Lois if she found it or not <coughs> <clears throat> but um, I was wearing a sweater and uh, she says, turn around. She, and, and I turn like this and she says, she, wow, there's a thorn in your side. <laughs> and it was. Yeah. There was a thorn. And she pulled it out. I said, the thorn is out of my side. Oh, you know, Paul prayed, prayed, prayed. Three different times. What did the Lord say? He said, my grace is sufficient. Right? 
this is what the Lord told me. Look, check, uh, Romans 15. 22 says this. For this reason, I have also been much hindered. Right? Paul's talking to the Roman church, and he says, up until this time, I've been much hindered. What is the, what is the thorn in the side? A hindrance, right? It hindered Paul from being who Paul really wanted to be, right? But he had to be hindered because he had to be humble, okay? And I was thinking about this even this morning, and it's like, God, what are you saying to me? Says, this thing has been a hindrance in your life. I'm taking it out. He says, up until this time, you've been much hindered from coming to you, but now no longer. You're no longer going to be hindered. So it's like, okay, God, 2022, there's no hindrance. Isn't that good? Whatever it was, I'm not, there could be a thousand different things that I can think of right now. Of me being hindered, right? But for some strange reason, I had a thorn in my side mm. that my wife was able to see. I wasn't able to see it. <gasps> Sometimes we need to be in relationships where you <coughs> can see what needs to be fixed so that you can be healed. Amen. Because you don't know why you're being hindered. And you can't see why you're being hindered. But your friend can. Right? Friend or wife or husband can. Right? They can see the obstacles and they, and they have the power to take that thing out. Praise God. Amen? So that's why we need to be in relationships. Okay? Now, mind you, I said this Friday night. This Friday night, I said 2022 is going to be a year where we're going to get Agree with God. In 2022, we're also going to agree that God is going to give us a helpmate. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that this is a husband and wife thing, okay? Because when Jesus sent out two by two, it was uh, very uh, unlikely to have a, uh, well, there was Priscilla and Aquila, but most of the time, <coughs> two by two, you know, two guys or two gals. Going out two by two. Okay? Each one having the opportunity to uh, to undergird the other person. Okay? I'm saying this year, guys, this year, God is going to give you someone that is going to help you uh, come under you and help you this year. Okay? If you guys have been alone, you're no longer going to be alone. Praise God. Amen? And I'm speaking that. I'm speaking that because God wants us... He says in the first part of Genesis, he says, it's not good that man be alone. Right? It's not good. But it ain't good being in a bad relationship. Because it, it, it does not do anything good no. in agreements, right? No. That's why he, he tells us if we are going to be in a relationship that we have to agree what God agrees, right? Mm-hmm. I told my wife right from the beginning, listen, I'm a crazy Christian. If you're going to get married to me, I'm going to be in ministry. I'm not going to be on the pews all my life. God's got something for me to do, and I've got to do it. And if you're going to agree with that, then we can get married. If, if you can't agree with that, then I've got to find someone else. Praise God. She says, woo <laughs> And she's been with me for 32 years. Now, I'm just saying, guys, and it hasn't been easy. In 32 years, there's been a ton of times where we could have disagreed and, and kept on in that disagreement, you know, kept on in that divisive tongue, kept on going at it, hitting each other with all these mean words. But you know what? There's a time where we have to say, I'm sorry. There's a time where we see the value in what God has brought together. There's a time where we have to uh, humble ourselves Amen. and get back in line. Because God only has one reason to bring two people together, and that's for communion. 
It's for a relationship. It's for something good. Amen? If he brings you into my life, it's because I'm in your life for good. Amen? Mm -hmm. And vice versa. If you guys come into my life, it should be an expectation of something good. Amen? I shouldn't see anything evil coming from you. Why? Because you agree with God. You're not going to hurt me. Just like you're not going to hurt yourself. You're going to love me the way that you love yourself. Amen? And we're in that we're going to be able to walk together. Do things together. Why? Because we both love God. Amen. 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 Amen.